Hey everyone, and welcome to my complete collection. It's been about six months since I last did one of these videos, uh, just going over pretty much everything that I have in my collection room. It's a pretty small room, although it is, uh, it does allow for a lot more space than I think a lot of people have. Um, but if you've followed my channel over the past year or so, I really focused a lot more on things that I really, really enjoy. And so some of the stuff is probably very much the same. Uh, some of the stuff might be new compared to my last pickup video, or not pickup video, but last collection video. Um, I did, I have been buying a lot this past year, 18 months, even though my focus is more, um, focused, shall I say, uh, much more narrow on stuff that I repeatedly reread or rewatch. So I'm just going to get straight into it because this will be a very long video and I hope you guys enjoy. So first off on this first shelf we have some manga box sets, the beautiful Akira re-release from Kodansha, the Nausicaa Valley of the Wind release, which is the Miyazaki manga of the film of the same name, as well as Kodansha's Sailor Moon uh, complete series box sets. On the first proper shelf of this bookcase we have the complete series of Pluto, um, up to date with Welcome to the Ballroom, the Shonen sports series about ballroom dancing. The first three volumes of Children of the Whales. I'm not completely up to date with the series just because I am waiting uh, until I buy more. It's not a high priority for me right now, but I do need to finish a couple of these volumes before I decide on whether or not I'm going to continue reading it. And then we have... 1 to 7 of Gangsta and then 1 to 4 of Gangsta Cursed. Uh, Gangsta is finally off of hiatus, I believe, and the fifth volume of Cursed is going to be the final one, so hopefully I'll see a conclusion for the two of these sooner rather than later. Next is Lovely Complex, the complete series, A Silent Voice, the complete series, 1 to 7. Mushishi, the entire series, including the three-in-one omnibus of the last three volumes, and After School Nightmare, one to ten. So all of these are completed series, um, all very different, but very, very good in my opinion. On this shelf is a majority of Moonchild. I'm missing volumes nine and twelve, although I am hoping to get those in the next couple of months. I do actually, I have bought them, but I bought them through a proxy, so they haven't actually reached me yet. I have my one eighth Yato scale next to Noragami, which is the series that he is from. So one to eighteen of this series plus the first volume of Stray Stories, the spin off series. On this shelf, I keep a majority of my taller trim ongoing series. All of these are ones I absolutely am adoring currently. Delicious in Dungeon is a fantastic uh, fantasy food manga. Golden Kamui, I think a lot of people are aware of now since the anime has just finished in this upcoming second season. Aka 13, which is wonderful. If you're a fan of Natsume Ono, I would highly, highly recommend it. To Your Eternity, which is the newest series by Yoshitoka Toki Oima, who did A Silent Voice. Um, it's a bit more based in fantasy compared to the just high school drama that was A Silent Voice, but I do highly, highly recommend it. Again, uh, Mitsuro Kubo's um, sort of sports manga. It's really, really good. Uh, time traveling elements. I love Kubo's work and this is definitely one to try if you haven't uh, given it a shot yet. Silver Spoon, Hiromu Arakawa's sort of slice of life agricultural manga. I'm a huge fan of Arakawa and this series is just amazing. <laughs> Def definitely does not disappoint. Then we have Inyo Asano's most recent work, Dead Dead Demons, Dead Dead Dead, Dead Destruction, as well as Watakoi, uh, Love is Hard for Otaku. And just sort of next to that, we have my 18th Seal Phantom Hive, uh, what is it, figure? Um, Anaplex exclusive, so he's a little pricier than a majority of the figures I buy, but absolutely worth it. He's gorgeous. <laughs> 
aside from the Hyoka box and the photograph there, we also have two manga series from one of my favorite mangaka, Fumi Yoshinaga, the entirety of Oku, or up until this point at least, as well as the entirety so far of What Did You Eat Yesterday. Two very, very different series, but uh, both have her typical atmosphere, and I I love her stories. I would really recommend Oku, especially if you're into historical manga, um, with a bit of a twist, but it's very, very good. What Did You Eat Yesterday um, is also really good, very different uh, food and recipe-based manga. Just great all around. On this shelf we have some more completed manga, so we have 1 to 23 of Hikaru no Go. Uh, yeah, great, great series. Um, a little bit lesser known, but it does have artwork by Takashi Obata before he got famous via Death Note, so if you're a fan of his I would recommend you pick it up because I think Yumi Hota is a fantastic writer I actually uh, think. I, I wish he had done another manga series because Hikuru no Go was a great one. Then we also have Genkaku Picasso by Usamaru Furuya who is more well known for some of his weirder stuff um, or, or darker maybe I should say but it is a great series. I actually prefer it to some of his less conventional things like Lychee Light Club. And then we have the entirety of Ottoman by Ayakano, 1 to 18. And again, Ayakano is a great mangaka. I'm really enjoying her current series. This is a little bit more typical shoujo, but it's it's really good. And both similar themes across both this and her current manga, although they are completely different settings. Uh, we also have some Nendoro Patees from um, Kwase in a Foreign Labyrinth, which is a show I don't know how many people know of, but is very cute and very sweet. Some more completed manga here with the entirety of Yu Hakusho. Of course, Yoshihiro Togashi is probably most well-known work. Um, certainly his most, uh, or the series that got him to the popularity that he is now. Next to that, we have two Fuyumi Soryo series, the first one being uh, Eternal Sabbath, or ES, which is sort of a seinen sci-fi, and then, of course, the quintessential Mars, which is much more of a high school romantic drama. Uh, so again, very different series from the same mangaka, but both really, really, really good. Um, Mars is a little bit, you know, overwrought and melodramatic, but I think that's what makes it Mars and not something it shouldn't be. It's it's wonderful. Then finally for this bookcase we have all of Skip Beat released to this point, so 40 volumes of this ongoing shoujo comedy. It's really, really fun. I've never uh, heard anything bad about this series. Everyone who tries it enjoys it. It is also the longest series in my collection at 40 volumes. There are a few that come close, but they haven't overtaken this series in terms of actual volume count as of yet. And I must say, even at 40 volumes, um, this is just a fantastic story to get into. If Even if you're not a fan of what a lot of people regard as typical shoujo, i.e. high school romance, this one is probably one you can really enjoy and get into. It's very funny, very genuine, and all of the characters are really, really likable. Next on the shelf, uh, next to that previous shelf, we have Anyanko Sensei Plush, which was actually given to me by my best friend. I love him. He's so sweet. And he just sits here and looks over the room, makes sure everything's going on okay. Beneath Nyanko Sensei, we have a whole bunch of more Fumi Yoshinaga. I do actually own all of her series, both BL and non. Um, so Flower of Life, which is one of my favorite manga of all time, the entire series at four volumes. Antique Bakery, which is probably her most well-known series, again, the entire series in four volumes. 
and then the one shot garden dream uh which is just really interesting it's very good i even her one shots i recommend so if you're interested that one's a little bit easier to track down than some of her other stuff um but yeah fantastic mangaka some fantastic manga here so next on this shelf is actually a bunch of films, mainly British releases actually. A Silent Voice in this corner of the world and Tiger and Bunny all come from the UK. Docusay is an Anaplex of America release. Um, yeah, beautiful, especially these three films are fantastic. And even the Tiger and Bunny films, I do have to say as franchise films, they work really, really well. I especially like The Rising, which actually works more so as a sequel um, or a side story than this, which is a little bit more of a recap plus some added stuff. Um, but yeah, I would recommend any of these films, especially these three, which are sort of standalone films. Um, yeah, just some beautiful packaging as well, which is why I mainly buy the UK releases rather than the um, more typical Australian releases that I find here. Next is my Toy Works Makoto, Tachibana, and Haruka Nanase from the Free franchise, as well as two, like, smaller versions of themselves, or child versions of themselves, which are just sort of, like, prize figures. I'm a huge, huge, huge Free fan. Anyone who's watched my channel for any amount of time, I make no secret of it. Um, I don't think it's the greatest show of all time, of course, but I do think that it gets a bad rap because it is sort of more female-focused fans. Um, but yeah, I these scale figures are not the best. They are certainly not the greatest quality, but I do really like them. I think they are done very well, and I'm a little bit more forgiving of toy works than I think some people are. So... They just hang out here. Next is some more sort of one-shot manga. Again, some more Fumi Yoshinaga stuff with All My Darling Daughters and Not Love But Delicious Foods Make Me So Happy. Then, of course, the incredibly popular and well-received My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness put out by Seven Seas, as was The Bride Was a Boy by Chi. Um, both memoir manga and LGBT manga so yeah a little bit different than I think some people expect but very important uh, works and I'm especially looking forward to the newest volume of this manga. Then we also have some vertical releases, two Kyoka Okazaki uh, titles one being pink, the other Helter Skelter, and then of course Moyoko Ano's Enclosed Called Fat. Uh, all fantastic must-reads in my opinion, um, especially if you're looking for some good Jose, I would recommend pretty much any of these. Next we have The Prince Barker and Android, as well as Funimation's Level E Limited Edition Blu-ray DVD release. I didn't mention it when I was showing off Yu Hakusho, but both myself and my sister are huge Yoshihiro Togashi fans, so it sort of goes without saying that we would have pretty much all of his stuff. Um, the... These actually are not mine, they're my sister's, but I do have my own copy of Level E. And yeah, again, he just sort of sort of hangs out around here. And yeah, not much to add aside from that. Here we get into a lot more of Natsune Ono's titles. Pretty much all of her one, or all of her one shots, not pretty much, all of her one shots, La Quinta Camera... Danza, Tesoro, Restaurante Paradiso, Gente, which are the is the three volume follow up to Restaurante Paradiso, and then we also have the Neo, Neo Parasite spin offs, so M and F. Um, these two books in particular are not like because they are a collaborative work, uh, so it's a collection of multiple shorter one shots by various manga. Gaka, it there's some great great <laughs> stories in here and some not great stories. 
Overall, I think I enjoyed Neoparasite F a little bit more, um, but Neoparasite M does have some great mangaka, most notably um, the first story in here by Moto Hagio. Uh, yeah, so it's yeah, uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend these those two books to pick up, but if you're a Parasite fan and you're interested, they might be something to check out. Next, we have some more prize figures from Robotics Notes, actually. These, again, are my sisters, uh, Frau and Akiho, I think is her name. Um, yeah, I think I'm in the minority here in that I actually really enjoyed <laughs> Robotics Notes a lot. I think a lot more than s other people, because I think some people had expectations after Steins Gate. Um, I don't say, I'm not going to say I like it more than Steins Gate, but I certainly think it has a lot of um, potential and merits that some people don't grant it because of its ties to Stein Steins Gate, but I do really enjoy it. And these price figures are pretty nice for their quality um, and their price. So, yeah, again, these two have always been here, and I don't know if they're going to move anytime soon. So this is just their spot until then. At the bottom of this shelf, we have a bunch of films. Uh, we have two This Boy shorts, the third and, or technically fourth and fifth, um, this boy suffers from crystallization, and then this boy is a magician, I think, um, which are Japanese releases, but they do have English subtitles on them. Then we also have uh, Tabimachi. Is it Tabimachi Late Show? I can't remember. Um, which, again, is a collection of shorts, which is in Japanese, but it does also have English subtitles. The Australian release of Brave Story, a film that has never gotten a release in the US despite having an English dub, uh, which is a little bit odd. Then we also have Millennium Actress, which again, this one has been released in the US, but uh, the dub was only ever released in the UK and Australia, so I don't know why that is that, but again, that's the Australian release. Towards the Terror, or Toward the Terror, the film adaptation of the 70s shoujo sci-fi manga. Then we have Interstellar, Stella 555, Story of the Secret Star System, the Daft Punk and Leiji Matsumoto sort of collaborative work. Um, my sister's a huge fan of Daft Punk, especially, but also this particular OVA, so... Yeah, that's technically hers, I believe. Then we have Spring and Chaos, which is one of the few Tokyo Pop uh, DVD releases we have. And then the Kickstarter release of Mind Game, which is a very interesting little film. I'm a big fan of the director, but I wouldn't say let that one be your first introduction to him. On the next uh, shelf, we have uh, just a bunch of one-shots, majority of my Jose one-shots, as well as the LGBT manga that I have. Um, so two Fumi Yoshinaga series, All My Darling Daughters and Not Love But Delicious Foods, make me so happy. Then we have a whole bunch of Seven Seas' LGBT manga, My Lesbian Experience of Loneliness, The Bride Was a Boy, and Claudine. All fantastic titles, highly, highly recommended. And then we have some vertical uh, Jose one-shots, two Kyoko Okazaki uh, books with pink in Helter Skelter, and then Moyoko Ano's in clothes called Fat. I love all of these books. I think they're covering a lot of different topics, but are all really great reads if you give them a shot. So on... Um so on the top of this bookshelf, we actually have the first Full Metal Alchemist Full Metal Edition hardcover volume of the manga, which is Viz's re-release of the series. Absolutely fantastic. If you're a fan of the series, I would recommend you picking up this version. I also have My Replica Gate that I got from the Ultimate Edition of the 2003 anime that was released in the UK. 
And then a bunch of these Full Metal Alchemist uh, prize figures that were released in Japan during the uh, Sacred Star of Milos film, I believe. Um, yeah, they're about the size of an android and were the only Full Metal figures that I had and were really available for a long time. So they just hang up. Uh, here with these and you can see there's a lot of space also a power board for the rest of the manga when it is finally released on the first proper shelf of this bookcase we have a bunch of my blu-ray box sets um, the first three are all Japanese editions or releases of the two seasons of Dorara um, the second season box is really just to collect the Anaplex of America releases, so there's some, uh, like, collected place where they all are in. And then Aka Space Brothers has the entirety of the Sentai uh, series, uh, and I made that box. Um, Tatami Galaxy, Oran High School Host Club, Death Note... Puella Magi, Madoka Magica, as well as the films, Razafon, Ranma, and Gurn Lagen. Um, majority of these are US or UK releases, but there are also the Madoka um, Ashon release, and yeah, again, Japanese one that I made as well. So a bunch of different box sets. I really like box sets for my favourite shows, and all of these are some of my favourite packaging. The next shelf is also uh, more anime just in the box sets. Typically all of these are Blu-ray um, sets or Blu-ray and DVD sets. A bunch of US releases with Noragami and Terran Resonance and Princess Jellyfish, etc. We also have UK releases like Kyoka and Wolf Strain. Um, the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood set is an Australian release, as is from the New World, and I think the only sets that I made on this uh, shelf are the Twelve Kingdoms and Moribito. Uh, Steins Gate film is also the Japanese release for that one. So again, a pretty decent mix of different countries' releases, but all for some pretty great shows. And now we have a third shelf of Blu-ray DVD box sets that are Blu-ray sized. So again, um, for the Australian releases, we have the classic Sailor Moon and then My Hero Academia. The rest are either US releases from Funimation or Viz, and then also UK releases. Snow White with the Red Hair is one that I made, and then Garden of Sinners is the standard Japanese release, but all the other ones are either US or Australian, um, or UK. We also have Ping Pong and Blood Blockade Battlefront um, from Britain. Now this shelf is something you might see quite a bit of just in my collection. I like having these breathing spaces or focal points. Um, this one is much, uh, very much like yokai inspired. We have Natsume's Book of Friends with the figure as well as my second box for the season four premium that was damaged in shipping. So we have a Natsume corner. We also have the medicine seller from Mononoke as well as my Japanese copies of Mushishi which I bought way back when, uh, before I had the actual English manga and I got them in book off in Japan. But I like just having little display areas. I think it helps break up uh, just the repetitiveness and, and fullness that like box sets and books take up. So yeah, that's why this spot is here. Here we have some more manga, a pretty sizable chunk of Kaze Hikaru, the first 14 volumes and then 16 to 20 and then 22 and 23. Uh, Frau 1 8 again from Robotics Notes, this one is a good smile scale. And then the first half of Kiss Him Not Me, a pretty funny uh, shoujo rom-com that uh, the premise is not the best, but I actually really enjoy the mangaka, and I think this story 
uh, was a lot better than I think we expected, and it turned out really good. So, yeah, the first half of that, volume 14, which is the last one, is coming out this month or next month, I can't remember. Uh, so yeah, almost done with that one in English releases, and I need to catch up and actually buy the rest of it. Here we have some more standard Blu-ray releases, um, everything from... Uh, Kiyosu Giga and Record of Lotus World, War and Yu Hakusho, Star Driver, Black Butler, um, whatever. I've got a lot of different things here, a lot of different genres, but all shows that I really enjoy. Um, there are a few that I haven't finished watching, and so whether or not they're going to be staying in the collection uh, is up for debate for once I actually finish watching them, but... Uh, again, a mix of sort of US and uh, Region B, so UK or Australian releases. Um, you can generally tell by the ratings logo on the bottom part of the spine uh, whether we, like the release is a Region A or Region B release. On this shelf is DVD anime releases. Um, aside from Tiger and Bunny, that's a Blu-ray, but it is like the larger DVD trim size. I don't know why they did that. Um, as well as Barefoot Gen, the four, first four books. Um, again, I haven't fully completed all of the series in this set, especially Nana. Um, I just got that and I've never seen it before, so considering on whether or not I'll be keeping these releases really depends on um, how much I enjoy. But again, mix of US and Australian releases. There's no UK releases in this area, but um, yeah, so like Hunter Hunter, the 1999 version um, is from the US, Holic, um, Quasi in a Foreign Labyrinth, and Night Raid and a Lovely Complex. Those are all US releases as well as some of them down here. But then again, majority of these are Australian and you can tell from the ratings logo down the bottom in very colorful uh, squares. Finally, for this bookcase, we have some of the NIS America releases that I own, which include Bunny Drop, Daily Lives of High School Boys, the entirety of Kimi Todoke, the first four seasons of Natsume's Book of Friends, and Uneko When They Cry. I did previously own more, but uh, those shows aren't ones that I rewatch a whole lot, so I just sold them on. I also have a couple manga, um, Rohan at the Louvre, as well as Guardians of the Louvre, um, which are both, like, Louvre-focused manga and were done in collaboration with the French uh, gallery as well as Jiro Tanaguchi's A Zoo in Winter. And then uh, also Fullmetal Alchemist, the Ultimate Edition art book, which again came with the UK Ultimate Edition of the 2003 anime. And we also have Maki from Love Live. I really like the these one seventh scale, so I do actually have all of the girls. I'm not a big Love Live fan, but the designs are really cute. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much what's on this shelf down here. Back to the top, we have the US release of Revolutionary Girl Utena, um, or Utena, the 20th Anniversary Ultra Edition put out by Right Stuff or Nozzle Me Entertainment. Um, still in its plastic, I haven't had the opportunity to rewatch this show recently, but it sits up here in pride of place because it is very big and it takes up a lot of space and it's a beautiful set, so... It's nice to just have it sitting here. First on this shelf is a bunch of the complete best or collected uh, openings and endings of various anime. So we have the two versions of Fullmetal Alchemist anime. Uh, we also have No Tamane, uh, which was a block that had several very popular shows and those are the most highly voted for openings and endings over the 10 years. Uh, Space Brothers, not Snow's Book of Friends, and then a Soul Eater as well. So this generally contains a, the, a music CD as well as a DVD, which has the animated versions of the openings and endings. And I really like these little collected sets. 
Then we have some more music, uh, all of the openings and endings of Hunter x Hunter, as well as the soundtracks and the fi film soundtracks. We also have the original soundtrack to Your Lion April, another collected like best openings and endings of Sket Dance, as well as Do Ra Ra Ra. Um, so again, just a whole bunch of different things here from shows I really enjoy. Then we have Kotobukiya's limited edition version of Edward Elric, 1-8th scale. This one comes with like a more elaborate bass. Um, the normal one only comes up like with this part. So I'm a huge Full Metal Alchemist fan, if you haven't noticed by now. And so this was sort of a no-brainer for me to get. Gorgeous, gorgeous uh, figure and just beautiful sculpt. It's just done so, so well. I hope to get Roy someday. He's a little harder to find now. So if that happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I'll just have to be satisfied with this. But uh, Kotobukiya did a really great job on both of these figures. For anyone who's seen my previous collection videos, these areas are pretty much the same. We have the first half of Ghibli films. Um, I am missing a couple, Totoro um, and Pompoko, and I think The Cat Returns are the only ones I'm missing. But uh, yeah, these are the, the first half of the studio's um, products or films that they put out. Below that are the collected box of the character singles for free, as well as these uh, exclusive rubber straps that came out with particular rubber strap boxes. Um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going to be putting the next collection of character songs because the new season of free is coming out, which means new character singles, and I don't know if I have the space for them. We'll see. The next shelf is much the same, more character songs and duet singles actually, as well as the soundtracks for the first two seasons and the high speed film. Then we have the second half of the Ghibli collection. Again, um, they're more recent films and I think a lot more of their films that people have uh, more awareness of just because they are newer and I think the opportunity to see them in cinema and that sort of thing is a lot more prevalent but yeah I really enjoy all the majority of the later Ghibli stuff I know some people think of like older Ghibli as like the classic Ghibli but I still adore some of their later works The Wind Rises, Poppy Hill, Princess Kaguya, Marnie yeah, Arietti, they're all really great, in my opinion. <laughs> Here we have another Love Live Girl, Honoka, from, obviously, Muse, the original Love Live set. And, again, not... I Like, I enjoy Love Live as a game, but I'm not super into it. And, but these figures are just gorgeous, so I really like her citrus or fruit uh, design. Here we have even more music CDs, again, free and full metal alchemist. So we have the openings and endings for a uh, majority of the two seasons, and I think also the film. Um, and then the three soundtracks, each of the original full metal alchemist and then Brotherhood. Again, I, I haven't bought CDs. Uh, for a very long time in regards to anime and manga. My most recent ones were probably Yuri on Ice, the soundtrack, and the like insert songs. They're not in this collection, they would be right here, but I keep them in my car because I listen to them. Uh, but yeah, so I haven't actually bought CDs in a long time. That'll probably change because we do have new seasons of things coming out, and there are some soundtracks I'm wanting to pick up. And then down here we have Xiaomei, and uh, this is actually a notebook in the shape of the Gate of Truth. Um, back, again, back when Formal Alchemist merch was few and far between, this is some of the only stuff I could find. And she just sits down here, hangs out, and it's pretty cute. Her fur is so soft, oh my goodness. 
On this shelf we have another thing that hasn't changed, it's Karu and Shinji as well as the Evangelion manga in its complete Viz Omnibus releases. And here we get into some of my figures. This whole bookcase is actually figures. We have the Haikyuu Nandroid for Karasuno. The only ones I'm missing are um, Tanaka and Asahi, but they haven't actually been released yet, so whenever they're released they will be put in here along with the rest of the boys. Next on the shelf is one of my favorite figures. It's absolutely gorgeous. A 1 7th scale by Altar of Haruka and Makoto from... Uh, this is actually the film, so high speed or free starting days from their middle school years. It's, yeah, beautiful, beautiful figure. Honestly, one of the best that I own. Here we have some more free figures with the Altair 1 8th scales of the boys in their high school versions. So again, Makoto, Haru, and as well as Rin, and some prize figures of them in like sailor suits. I don't know, I think it, they look pretty good all together. Sosuke is the next one coming out. Rei and Nagisa have also been um, solicited and put out for pre-orders, so soon I will have more of these, and I don't know where I'm going to put them once I do, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting the rest of these boys. Next shelf we have some more 1-8 figures. We have a uh, revolutionary girl Utena, so Utena from that show. We have Maka from Soul Eater and Kino from Kino's Journey. All really great characters, um, some of my favorites, and really um, tough girls who certainly have an attitude, and so I think these three work very well together. On the next shelf we have the entirety of the Yu Hakusho 1-8th figures put out by, I think, uh, I don't remember. It's either Kotobukiya or Mega House. I don't remember. But finally finished the collection with Kuwabara. Um, these figures just got, recently got a re-release, so we were able to get him. And now we have all of the boys, and it's really great. Um, I really like these. If you're a Yu Yu Hakusho fan, these are sort of like a no-brainer. I think they're the best versions um, you can get and obviously have... A majority of the main cast, no problem. On this shelf we have the third years from Love Live for their scales. So we have Ellie, we have Nico and Nozomi. Again, one seven scales put out by Alter. Just gorgeous. Gorgeous. I really love Ellie's design or costume in particular, but they're all really beautiful, wonderful uh, figures. And like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the franchise, but uh, these figures are just almost too good to pass up. On the last shelf of this bookcase, we have sort of a mishmash of things. We have the rest of my Haikyuu Nandroids from the different schools outside of Karasuno. We also have my two Sword Boy uh, releases. I don't know their names. I'm not up to date or like I don't really follow Token Rambu, so I couldn't tell you who anyone is. <laughs> But I really like the designs on these two. I like the designs on all of them, but I don't know. These two appeal to me in for some reason. I also have the Death Note art book at the back. And behind that is actually a collected art book of Natsune's Book Friends. As well as the limited edition of the Anohana ending. Yes. So they're all sort of oversized and a little big to fit anywhere else, so I've just put them all down here together. Top of the next shelf we have a teeny tiny little Kino, and we also have the first 10 books of the Umineko manga series. Um, this manga series is actually the only one that isn't mine that is in this room. Uh, this is a series my sister is collecting, but it fits here, and so we keep it here. Next on the shelves we have DVD box sets, again a mix of like Australian, US and UK releases. We do also have two box sets that I made, the first one being Mononoke here, which actually contains the Goblin Cat uh, single from 
samurai horror stories as well as the main mononoke series uh this one next to monster is actually a japanese mushishi box set but contains the u.s release of season one and then the australian release of season two and big wind up is another box that i made so that contains the two half uh season sets from funimation and then this complete second season put out by nozomi uh yeah again a lot of really great shows things i really love the other one on the other side of monster is the library wars film on blu-ray that's a japanese release with english subtitles and a majority of these are like the complete collection or as much as has been released of the anime so far on the next shelf we have more uh dvd releases and some or dvd size releases as well as some blu-rays so gothic is another box that i made that has the subtitled only australian dvd releases which were put out years and years and years before uh, funimation relicensed and dubbed it uh genshiken has the two seasons and ovas in there so not just the first season which is what that box was initially for hell girl is the same thing it has the first three seasons in there rather than just the singles for the first season we also have the first jojo set on here mainly because there's not a huge amount of room on my blu-ray sets uh we have some more display stuff so we have a couple fan books and art books here uh, Time of Eve, Natsume Ono, uh, Tokyo Ghoul, Horimiya, Lovely Complex, just a whole bunch of stuff there, as well as Eveland, which is from the Time of Eve Kickstarter, and uh, a couple other things. So on this shelf we have Blu-ray movies. Apologies for the glare, down here is more standard stuff. Again, generally Australian or UK releases, a couple US releases like with the This Boy OVAs, Garden of Words, etc. Um, these are also the Japanese releases, so we have um, 5 centimeters per second and the Japanese standard release of Your Name and some more with like more elaborate packaging. We also have a 1 7th, I think 1 7th or 1 8th scale of uh, the fox boy from not somebody's book of friends uh but yes so we have these are both uk releases another uk release australian uh these are australian this is the kickstarter release and then some us releases here um these are the same film just different versions of the same film or different releases and yeah again i have a very eclectic mix of films here but all really good in my opinion i enjoy them a lot except for maybe origin origin's not a good film but it is a beautiful film on this shelf we have uh some more manga so just a bunch of like one shots and various um single volume sets lots of vertical lots of drawn and quarterly as well as some older viz stuff and some you know just odds and ends here and there we also have the entirety of after school charisma on the other side a uh, sci-fi seinen from kumiko suikane and in the middle we have a one eighth scale of hozuki from hozuki's cool headedness um yeah he's a anaplex i think I can't remember who put him out, but he's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous uh, little figure there. Here we have some hardcover manga. So we have 1 to 9 of Vinland Saga. I'm waiting for volume 10. It's been shipped out to me. I just haven't received it yet. We've got Rin again from Love Live in the middle and then another hardcover manga set with bra uh, a bride story. By Karamori, one of my absolute favorite manga series. And that little piece of paper in front of that is actually my name in Korean, my full name. Uh, yes, don't ask me why that's there. That just is hanging out right there. But both really good series, um, historical, but very, very different genres. And I recommend them both highly, but for very different reasons. This shelf is more manga. We have six volumes of Cross Game. I'm only missing six and seven for that series. And then the first eight volumes of Nobari no O plus volume 11. 
so five more volumes of that one. Uh, number six, it's just the first volume of that, and then over here we have the first volume of both Motaki and My Boy, as well as volumes one, four, and eight of With the Light, Raising an Autistic Child. Um, yeah, so this is sort of the stuff that I'm picking up willy-nilly and just haven't fully completed yet. Um, majority of these titles are older ones, so they're sort of my priorities to complete for this year, although I don't necessarily think I'll be able to, in regards to With the Light, some of those uh, volumes are very hard to get now. Motoki and My Boy are just there due to lack of space anywhere else. We also have the Shikishi in the middle of Full Metal Alchemist, and that was given out for the Sacred Star of Milos film, so I just got that from Mandrake. Oh, a couple bucks. And here we have generally um, some of the shorter trim manga that I have in my collection. So we have Mysterious Girlfriend X and Devil's Line, as well as Arjun from Vertical. They're all like the short series. What We also have One Piece books, the complete series of Whispered Words. The first three volumes of Bloom Into You, a Yuri put out by Seven Seas, and then another Seven Seas title, The Girl from the Other Side. Uh, most of these are ongoing. Mysterious Girlfriend X and Whispered Words are both finished, um, but I tend to try and keep manga the same height together, so these just all fit together pretty, pretty perfectly. For the final shelf on this bookcase we have the entirety of Monster and the Perfect Editions, Naoki Urasawa's um, like psych psychological thriller uh, mystery. We also have the collector's edition of Pandora Hearts put out by Yen Press. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous set. The complete 24 volume series in 12 two-in-ones, as well as the box for the UK Wolf's Reign Ultimate Edition that has the posters and the art book and the various other things in there. Um, and I just keep the discs separate over with my normal Blu-ray box sets. Top of the last bookcase in the major bookcase unit is uh, the Oran High School Host Club box set for the manga, all 18 volumes just in that one set. Really funny, fun shoujo manga, uh, rom-com, more so on the comedy side than the romance side, but honestly like one of my favourite series. It's older, but it is definitely a classic. The, we have the Hiku no Go art book. Uh, again, another Takashi Obata um, art art book collecting his works for Hikaru no Go. Uh, Umi from Love Live and also the Japanese release of Recalled Out Summer, which is one of the Garden of Sinners uh, follow-up OVAs, sort of. On the first shelf we have the five volumes of Land of the Lustrous, waiting for volume six next month. I love that series, absolutely phenomenal. The first Devilman Omnibus by Seven Seas. This is the first of their classic collection that I've gotten so far and it's absolutely gorgeous. Cannot wait for the second half and I'm pretty interested in seeing uh, their other titles in this line, as well as Dora Hidora, the complete up-to-date series with the 22 volumes. Um, just recently started getting into Dora Hidora, but I've read it all, it is really good, and I'm glad that I finally, finally jumped on it, especially now that it is seeming to wrap up. So we're looking, probably going to see an end fairly soon. On the next shelf, again, apologies for the glare, we have the first 25 volumes of Black Butler. Again, I say this every time I do a collection update video, um, this is one that I think has a bad reputation due to the fan base, but as a series itself, it's actually pretty solid little gothic horror mystery series. Um, I really enjoy it for what it does really well. There are some things I don't like about it, but I do think it's a lot better than people maybe give it credit for. We also have the 10 volumes of Horimiya, volume 11 out I think right now, so I'm waiting for my copy to come out soon. Then we have 
Volumes 1 to 3 of The Case Study of Vanitas, Jun Mochizuki's most recent uh, manga since Pandora Hearts. And then we have the first volume of Kekaishi. Uh, that's a shonen that I'm wanting to try. It sounds interesting, and I've heard actually pretty good things. Um, it's a little bit different than what you might expect, and so um, it's like an action shonen, but it's a lot quieter, a lot character focused and that intrigued me so I don't know whether I'll be seriously picking up the 30 odd volumes of this but I wanted to give the first couple volumes a try at least. And as I had mentioned I am a big Togashi fan so is my sister so no Togashi collection is complete without Hunter Hunter. Uh, we have the first 34 volumes of the English release of this series, as well as the Japanese release of Volume Zero, which was put out with the Phantom Rouge uh, film, sort of Kurapika's backstory there, as well as my Mega House 1 8th scales of Gone and Killua. I love those two. And those, I think Killua was my first proper uh, figure that I ever got, so... They started it, and it's just continued to grow from here. But I really love Hunter x Hunter. I think people have a lot of issues with it. I don't agree with a lot of the criticisms. But, um, yeah, that's their opinion versus my opinion. And I really love it. I can't wait for Volume 35 whenever we get that in English. Another mostly breather uh, sort of display shelf. We have the first four volumes of Kasei san and I think the fifth volume is the last one. Uh, there's the Chaha Furu Japanese Blu ray box set for the first season. We also have the Toy Works Rin here. He's just hanging out. I, he's not really supposed to be here, but I put him there when I was shuffling things around and I haven't moved him. So, Chaha Furu postcard behind him. And then uh, just some little other odds and ends, photographs, uh, illustrations, that sort of thing. And then we also have the Book Girl Nendroid from the Book Girl or Bungaku Shoujo light novel series. I absolutely adore that light novel series. It is available via Yen Press. And this Nendo is just so, so cute. And with this shelf, we reach another series that I think has become obvious that I love a lot. This is Natsume's Book of Friends, the manga volumes 1 to 21, so again, up to date. This is the Kotobukiya release figure, um, not to any particular scale, but I absolutely adore the Madara um, that they managed to put together. And then we have another postcard just framed there. I really love Natsume. Everything to do with Natsume, I'm all for. So this is where the manga is. Here we have some more standard size manga, some really great story, uh, stories, <laughs> series. Yon of the Dawn, which I think a lot of people are following, one of the really great shoujo fantasies coming out right now. Requiem of the Rose King, absolutely amazing dark historical drama. Uh, Everyone's Getting Married, that's a Jose series with a pretty interesting story. It actually surprised me a lot. I enjoyed it. Um, volume 9 is going to be the last one, so almost finished with that series. And then Nozaki-kun, or Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, 1 to 9. Uh, yeah, just all really good series again, but very different. Here is some more standard Viz Shonen stuff. Of course, Haikyuu, 1 to 23, another sports series I absolutely love, and 24 and 25 are on their way to me thanks to uh, my changing websites where I bought them. Uh, the 24th one didn't actually ship out to me until recently, so I'm hoping to get both of those in pretty quick succession. We also have My Hero Academia, 1 to 20, uh, 12, again, 13 of that series should be on its way to me soon. I like keeping up to date with these series. They're both really, really good, and I like them a lot. This shelf is by far the emptiest <laughs> in this room. Uh, we have 1, 2, 4, and 6 of Sunny uh, by Taya Matsumoto. I'm hoping to get the rest sometime this year. And we also have the Chihai Furu um, quote-unquote art book. It's more so a collected uh, 
poster collection. It's not actually bound like a typical art book would be, um, but I absolutely adore it. I'm a huge Haifu fan. I don't know what will go down here for the rest of, uh, like, in the future, but this is the most free space I have right now. This is the last bookcase in this room, so we're finally getting to the home stretch. We have 1 to 12 of Vagabond and the Visbigs, another historical drama. I think this one is maybe more familiar to most people. I really love these Visbig editions. I think I've read all of them, maybe only up to 11. I need to actually catch up. Uh, but yeah, great series, and it did take me a little while to get into this one, but really enjoy it. And as you can see, we have some more manga. In this particular bookcase, all of these are completed or mostly completed series um, of some of my absolute favorite manga of all time. Um, I highly, highly recommend pretty much all of these or all of them, full stop. Fruits Basket 1 to 12, this is the Yen Press uh, Collector's Edition re-release. Beautiful, beautiful books. And this shoujo really is like one of the classics of its period. It's just so good and it holds up so well. Children of the Sea, Daisuke Igarashi's five volume series is phenomenal. It's so much more than I think a lot of people expect from manga and it's such a shame that so many people don't know about that series. Uh, in this corner of the world is the three-in-one omnibus, so the complete series. Just beautiful, hopeful, emotional, uh, slice of life war series. I, I love it. The film is um, phenomenal and yeah, highly recommend that one too, put out by Seven Seas. Here we have the rest of my Kaoru Mori collection as well as my Emma 1 8 scale. She's so beautiful even though she is a little bit older. We, there's the single volume of Shirley that CMX put out, the two volumes of the bilingual edition of Chahaya Furu that was released in Japan, uh, the first half of My Brother's Husband, I'm anticipating the second half, I really, really am looking forward to that, Go Go Monster by Taya Matsumoto, another one of his series, and then as I said, Kaori Mori with the entire series of Emma, and then her collected works of uh, anything and something. Here we have some Keiko Takamiya with to Terra and Andromeda stories, both uh, 70s shoujo sci-fi, put out by Vertical. Great, great books, although a little bit hard to find nowadays. This figure in particular is uh, like a Chinese Vocaloid. I don't know much about her, but I love her design. It's incredibly uh, something that appeals to me, so I had to have her. Um, then we have the first three volumes of Sweet Blue Flowers. Volume 4 is on its way and that is the final volume so I'm really looking forward to getting that and finally finishing this phenomenal Yuri series. And then the first seven volumes out of ten of Descending Stories. One of just, if you're looking for a Jose that's a little bit different, isn't the expected office woman romance, I would recommend Descending Stories 100%. It is so good. On this shelf we have House of Five Leaves by Natsume Ono, a series I recently reread and just, I still love it, adore it, amazing. Princess Jellyfish, which just finished uh, releasing I think last month, and that was amazing. Another phenomenal Jose I would recommend to anyone. Uh, not very different from Descending Stories, but uh, also very, very, very good. Um, then we have Planetus by Makoto Yukimura of Vinland Saga. And then we have Natsume Ono's Not Simple, which I think is her title that majority of people may have first been introduced to her through. And then we have Solonin by Inyo Asano, the volume that I think needs really no introduction. Um, definitely his most accessible work currently. Um, yeah, it's great. It's a must-read. It's a lot more hopeful than I think most of his works, and yeah, it's one that I think most people have read, and if you haven't, then you should try it, because it's very, very, very good. 
here we have my oversized uh, hardcover releases or mostly hardcover releases. Wandering Sun, uh, the, the Heart of Thomas, Nijigahara, Holograph, Otherworld Barbara, and A Drunken Dream are all put out by uh, Fantagraphics. Fantastic Publisher doesn't really focus on manga, but all of their books are absolutely worth the money. I recommend all of these. Um, some are a lot harder to get than others, but um, if you're a fan of sort of lesser known or less popular genre manga, then they're, they're a publisher to watch out for. Um, yeah, as you can see, I have Hagia's Heart of Thomas, Otherworld Barbara, and A Drunken Dream. I hope we do get more of her works put out by Fantagraphics. There's also Therme Rome, which is a Yen Press release, a funny little seinen um, time travel manga. And then Tekken King Creep, Black and White, another Taya Matsumoto work. And last but not least, of course, A Distant Neighborhood by Jiro Tanaguchi, probably his most well-known title, um, at least in English. It's, yeah, it's really, really, really good. And that's a Fanfare Ponent one book. And with those books, they are uh, flipped, so you read them left to right rather than right to left, rather than the more traditional manga um, formatting that people are used to now. So don't go into it not expecting that, but it is a beautiful book despite that. And on the final shelf of the final bookcase in this room, we have a majority of my art books, especially my favourite ones, from all different sorts of manga, of all different genres and all different artists. Uh, free, the free illustration works are, of course, from the free TV shows and movies. Um, but we also have a bunch of mangaka books like Jiro Tan Tanaguchi, uh, the Tagami Bachi and just general Hiroyuki Asada illustration books. Soul Eater, Pandora Heart, Steve Gray Man, Spice and Wolf, Mushishi, Full Metal Alchemist, Land of the Lustrous, and Descending Stories, Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, just as many as of my favorite mangaka and mangaka I really adore their artwork. Um, I try to get. Bakano, I think, is the most recent art book overview I've done. Um, I'm also hoping to do one for Angel Eyes, which is the Banana Fish art book. I have two more that I just recently got, so they will probably get an art book overview soon. But I have done one for majority of the ones in here, uh, aside from a handful, which hopefully I'll be able to cover in the coming months. But if there's a particular art book you see here that I haven't gone over, then um, you can request me, you know, do them. I'll I'll certainly do my best. But yes, that is it for these bookcases. <laughs> so that is my complete anime and manga collection, etc. as of July 2018, the end of July. It's been roughly six months since I last did a video like this, and whilst plenty has stayed the same, I do think there has been quite significant changes. I do try to keep it as organized and well uh, set up as I can. Um, considering the how I've been purchasing over the past 18 months, there's quite a few very popular manga that I do still follow in some form, whether that be Kindle or through a library, that I don't own in my collection or don't own any more in my collection. But uh, again, if you've spent any time with my channel, you know that I do focus on collecting the things you love and go back to again and again and again. Uh, rather than trying to buy as many books as possible and having this huge backlog of stuff I haven't read and collecting just for collecting sake. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel um, and you're interested, I would really appreciate a subscribe if you've stayed with me for the long, long videos and the sort of um, varying quality of my videos over the past couple years. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the support and I hope this was interesting to you guys. Um, 
yes, if you want to talk to me, always feel free to leave a comment. I also have my Twitter link in the description, so I'm on there pretty constantly. You can generally get get me uh, there and be able to talk to me there. But thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Till